Hello everyone, uh, Mike Jabzak here with usfasttrack.ca. Uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about how to hire the right contractors. Uh, this was uh, from our latest meetup group, which met uh, January 27th. To uh, open up, we're just going to be talking about, um, first what we did at this meetup, since it's our first 2013, a uh, little introduction. Um, of everyone that came out, we appreciate the support. Um, so we did introductions, obviously we're not gonna have all the introductions, but I'll do one for myself. Um, second, we're gonna have important updates, just some new things uh, changing with our meetup group. Third, we're gonna cover how to hire the right contractors, which is our main presentation. And fourth, we're uh, revamping our new joint ventures for 2013, um, which was, uh, Presented by Matt, he will. Uh, he's not here right now to record his uh, spew, but I'll be just going over it. It's uh, not too long. So to start off, we got uh, who, you know basically who I am. I'm uh, basically been. My name is Michael uh, Jacob Zach. I've been buying in the U.S. for the last two years. Uh, my market that I love is uh, Georgia, specifically the Atlanta metro area. And. Uh, Basically, we've been buying there for the last two years and uh, haven't looked back and uh, going to be buying for the next couple of years here. But uh, moving forward, uh, important dates for uh, we have a new price. Normally, it's five dollars for our meetings, but uh, due to the cost, you know, it, we don't break even even on that. So we're implementing a twelve dollar per meeting, uh, which will cover uh, food, drink and uh, admin costs uh, to run the meetup. I'm hoping uh, that uh, this doesn't uh, scare away new uh, new investors to our meetings because uh, it's one of the best meetings I find out there when, with regards to U.S. real estate and um, practical um, information that uh, real investors are doing. Uh, same location, we're, we're at the Boston Pizza in, in Vaughan. Um, same time, we're usually from 11 till 2 on Sundays, which is usually the last Sunday of the month. Um, these uh, will implement this new price change starting the next meetup. Uh, and like I said, we appreciate all the support from all our followers. So moving forward, uh, I like to uh, basically talk about the types of contractors out there. Um, I like to label them as three. Uh, there's general contractors, which... They're usually really experienced. They understand multiple aspects of construction. They're licensed and insured. Um, they have trades to complete all aspects of work. Uh, there's usually about 10 to 30% um, cost to these uh, contractors on top of their labor. Uh, the good thing is they can pull permits because they're fully licensed. So they're uh, really good for major uh, renovations. Our second type of contractors turnkey which they're specific to a trade uh, usually licensed and insured they're usually found in the Better Business Bureau example would be Roto Rooter which is a plumbing company so it's it's the companies that are you can you find them in the yellow pages they're credible you call them up you tell them hey my uh, my hot water tank is in the fritz and they come out and they full service it and get it back to normal and uh, it's usually done you know they have offices and it's not a small company uh, so great great for uh, Canadians just looking for reliable workers uh, our last is a freelance worker um, they may or may not be licensed um, may or may not have lots of experience they're usually cheaper because they have less overhead uh, and can be found by word of mouth or uh, free websites on the on Craigslist or Kijiji. I say usually cheaper because at sometimes I've had quotes on my rehabs from a ten thousand dollar job that ranges from you know seven thousand to fifty thousand dollars, like some ridiculously quotes from you know freelancers and. And sometimes some pretty big companies, which uh, it's kind of ridiculous sometimes. Uh, which one to hire? So obviously there's many things you can consider. Uh, all those contractors at some point can uh, do the job done properly. Uh, but you got to remember, obviously, number one being scope of work. If it's major or minor, 
obviously if it's minor you don't need a general contractor to come in and kind of like oversee the project because it's it's a minor you know fixing a toilet or something obviously your time if you're limit your time um, you might need a general contractor to oversee a bunch of stuff because your time is very limited in the location so if you're not going to be present during renovations um, are you available to answer questions throughout the day if you're not you might need someone to delegate um, to handle those aspects uh, if you need permits obviously if you need a permit you can't get someone that's non licensed because they need to be able to pull those permits for you so these are things that you want to consider after uh, you consider those things where do you find these um, these contractors uh, for one uh, referrals is always a great way from other investors um, I have no, no problem handing out certain contractors that uh, I use some of them I can't because I keep them so busy and uh, I can't let anyone steal them from me they're good workers I find really good um, contractors are hard to uh, sometimes get a hold of because they're constantly busy with their um, investors or you know just in general their business uh, another good idea is to go to Home Depot, Lowe's, hand, um, hang out there for the day, hand out your business card, or not even the day, just go for an hour and you know talk to a few people. Contractors are always in and out by the contractor desk. Obviously, internet. You can just Google uh, your area and, and, and look up, you know, or go on Kijiji, and, uh, or Craigslist is the big one in, in the U.S. there, and, and just look up what kind of service and... That's definitely a good way, and obviously the Yellow Pages is still around. You can just look up in the back, and they'll have all kinds of um, companies that service the area. Now, questions to ask. Uh, these are questions I like to ask. Obviously, no particular order. You just like to get an understanding. Um, if you're licensed or bonded, obviously, if they're licensed, um, you know, they're not necessarily um, the best contractor, but there are, you know, at some point, they, they're professional, so they're licensed and bonded, which is um, always great. Uh, do they break down, oh, how do they break down their estimates? This is a big one. To me, I like um, to see my estimates broken down into uh, individual. So many times I walk through um, properties and, you know, I, I give my work out to the contractor and they give me a bulk um, number and it doesn't work for me. I, even though, I, you know, I'm like them. I can walk through a... A property and engage how much stuff's gonna cost me but I like to know you know I made the joke of where I'm getting ripped off on um, but uh, I like to know price break you know where they're where I can save money with not giving them work or where they're giving me a good deal on and, and all that uh, what's their availability to start a new job if they're uh, too busy I had a job that uh, property that you know I gave a guy a, um, or he gave me a quote and he's just like I can start in two months and I'm like Shh. I'm hoping it's sold by then, so uh, he couldn't uh, he couldn't start that job. Um, ask them what they're qualified to do um, versus don't tell them what you need done. I'll, I can't tell you enough. You know, people contractors are starving. Sometimes they'll do work that they're not qualified to do just because you know they can read and, and research on Google or YouTube how to maybe pull it off. Uh, that's no good in our business. You know, uh, to me having to pay someone to do it again is a hassle and it kills time. Um, ask them if they've ever pulled permits or if they can pull permits. Uh, do you hire subcontractors um, or if they do the work themselves? Uh, you want to know that. Have you ever worked with any investors? A good question because uh, I made the joke again uh, if, if they know they're not going to, you know, to me investors uh, were cheap and uh, they should know that because they, you know, they can't pull fast ones on us because uh, we don't have the money to pay them to some extent. So um, that's a good question. Uh, do they charge for estimates if you need an estimate? Uh, if so, how much? Uh, you want to know if they're coming over. Um, I like to say, you know, at some point it's not a bad thing that they charge for estimates, but at some point is it worth, um, you know, maybe the job is big enough that you need that that uh, contractor or I was saying that get another investor in your property um, I tell people when I'm in Atlanta I got no problem walking by their uh, property and, and scoping out my opinion on it um, and on how much their budget should be and whatnot um, you know investors know how to save money 
and uh, it's always great to um, to mingle with other investors in your markets, even though you're you might be competing with them. Um, how much notice do they need for new work? So obviously, if they uh, if they're available for on call, like you know your plumber, at some point you like your plumber to be available twenty four seven. If if there's an issue, uh, will they be there? Uh, can you and then also last but not least, uh, can you provide references uh, references upon request? This is very important because at the end of the day, we need to verify if they've done work and if they have satisfied satisfied customers. Um, I'll even drive by certain properties that they've done exterior work and just see uh, attention to detail. Uh, also, I always tell people like, don't give new contractors so much work right off the bat you know all my contractors anytime I'm hiring new contractors I give them small small jobs and see how well they perform I had uh, one of my contractors I use now for a lot of my stuff he actually got hired to do um, my siding repair and it was a minor job one day job and came in and executed it perfectly I was painting him inside the kitchen and he started pointing out a lot of work not to try to pick up more work but just to give me a heads up that was done in my house and it was kind of done it could be done better we'll say to say the least and um, he was just doing it as courtesy and because of that I, I noticed that like this guy is really attention to detail and it wasn't like it was horrible work that was done but I like when work is done it's done right the first time that's something that's in my blood and I expect it from everyone and and that to me is how you get good contractors give them a little work see how they perform and feed them a little bit more if they're uh, if they're good uh, next slide here when do I need a permit um, I always tell people check with your county city hall it's usually their build, a building department and uh, before you do anything to make sure your butts covered but a general rule it's usually like any major plumbing, HVAC, electrical, um, like if you're removing walls, adding walls, um, you need permits on all that stuff because like I was telling everyone, if you remove a wall that's structural, you're jeopardizing everyone in that house. And there's a reason, you know, engineers put together these houses, although it, lo it looks just like, you know, four sides and doors and all that, everything's done for a reason. Um, but if you're, you know, adding new square footage in the basement, all you need permits for that because they're, they're going to want, especially if you're selling, they're going to want to see all that paperwork that it was done properly. Um, and obviously, major uh, renovations to begin with. If you're, you know, tearing out multiple stuff and adding, that's that you're going to need those permits. And uh, a comment was made that you need to make sure you know if multiple permits are needed if you have them all. So sometimes you'll, you'll need a renovation permit with you know an HVAC permit with a plumbing permit sometimes they just bulk it all together it depends on the county but it's something to be aware of so get to know that when you start doing renovations you know and all it takes is just call you know go on your website the county city hall call them and they'll be happy to give you that information uh, license versus non-license um, so the question kind of comes out, do, does my contracts need to be licensed? Um, it's uh, yes and no, uh, depending on you know certain things. General rule I like to say is anything with the HVAC, you want a licensed uh, contractor. Um, same for uh, plumbing and electrician. The reason why is at the end of the day, you know, if someone redoes your plumbing and something goes wrong down the line, you got tenants in there, you want a licensed plumber to, uh, it's, you know, their insurance will cover it. Uh, and, you know, it, it just, it's, at the end of the day, it's, you need that to protect yourself. Um, you know, it's, it's more expensive, but it will save you a ton of money through lawsuits and all that. Um, obviously, for painters, it's a yes and no. Obviously, if your house is four stories high and you got painters that are on these crazy ladders, do you really want that you know non-licensed insured guy climbing up those ladders? And you know if something happens, it's uh, it's a big issue. So maybe it's a yes and no. Um, handyman, it's a yes and no as well. 
some handyman, you know, don't need to be licensed and they're just doing um, minor things throughout the house. But is it a bad thing that they are licensed? No. Uh, and then obviously specialty trade, uh, it's a yes and no, depending on the, the specialty. We made a comment, foundation, you know, you might want, or a mold um, company that comes in and cleans, you're obviously gonna want them specialized and licensed for that. Um, so good to know. Uh, also, a slide that we missed was how to pay your contractors. This was uh, one of the our, our investors that came out, brought this to my attention, and I'm like, how can I forget to put a slide in about this? So we uh, fit it in here. Basically, never pay up front, uh, even if it's a one-day job, always pay after the work's completed. Uh, for longer projects, obviously, uh, you're gonna have to put some money up front just for uh, maybe materials and all that. I say 10%, but it, it honestly varies on what you're doing. It could be 25%. But uh, I usually space out payments um, depending on how long the job is. Obviously, if it's a two-week job, you know you could do possibly four payments, or you could just break it into maybe two, three payments. Um, you always want to save some for the after it's complete, completed, though, because that's the last payment that is made before the contractor is done and you want to verify that all the work is done nothing is the worst of chasing contractors to come back to your house after you paid them they're notorious for vanishing and on to the next one even if they don't mean it they're busy and it's very hard to get them back into your house so keep a portion till after um, i also have a note there that I have them sign a waiver of completion or just make sure that on the receipt it says paid in full and get that documented because at some point if a contractor comes back to you and says, hey, you didn't pay me, that is your proof to say, hey, I paid you, it's paid in full, make sure you carry that, it's very important. And finishing up here, we got their, uh, I'll just go through it fast, it's our 2013 new joint venture uh, program. We had to alter this due to the fact that we came, we're very extremely busy and we signed a pretty big deal um, with our business and we had to revamp our joint venture um, deal. So basically, we're gonna establish uh, or buy rental properties with investors which will put up all the capital to um, purchase, rehab it, and get it rented. And we will cover, we will find the house, fix it up, get it rented. And our investors are limited partners. We're the general partners, so they're only liable for the money they put in and all the money that is uh, the net profits from the property will flow back into the investor's pocket that's a hundred percent until all their capital is returned so if they have forty thousand and just say it's a net profit per month five hundred every quarter we would give them a payment of fifteen hundred dollars until their capital is returned so after their their capital is returned this is for someone that this is a, a buy and hold strategy, three to five years. It's not six months or a year. Uh, it's for someone that wants to hang on to these properties. After the profit is returned, either through a finance or returning of all the capital through net profits, it splits to a 50-50 profit sharing business model, which will be split between the limited partner and us, the general partner. So this is all future appreciation and net profits on cash flow. So if the once the investor gets his forty thousand back out, they are now no longer receiving five hundred per month. They're receiving two fifty until we sell it. And then once we sell it, if we sell it for seventy five thousand, uh, they would split that fifty fifty. So thirty five thousand for them, thirty five thousand for us, seventy thousand. Now the benefits of this, we in Atlanta are hitting 15 to 25% return on investment, cash on cash return. So right off the bat, you can get start making 15 to 25 once the investment's up and running. This is stress-free investing because we're gonna handle all the details. Also, you're gonna benefit from forced appreciation from day one. When we purchase these properties and fix them up, there's a value there. Someone that wanted to come buy it right off us would have to probably pay if we're all in at you know fifty thousand. It might be worth sixty five, seventy, depending on the area. So right off the bat, there's equity in the deal. We don't make any money off that until the end. 
also, you'll never have to worry about fixing any issues with, or tenant complaints. We handle all that. We're the general partner. We'll handle all our, um, you know, any complaints or repairs that need to be uh, dealt with. We'll deal with that. It's also a great way to invest in a foreign area without the risk. So this is something to think about if you're looking to get into something in the U.S. and you don't want the hassle of dealing with buying, fixing, and I'll tell you right now, it's a lot of work that goes into this stuff. I've been doing it for two years and it's every day is something new comes up. So, um, but it, like I said, great way to make some, uh, a great return on your money. Also, there's a note here that we're also offering 8% interest first position um, loans on our properties as well. So this is for someone that doesn't want ownership but says, hey, you know what? I like to make 8% of my money. I'll give you uh, a loan and we'll put it on one of our properties. So just say the property is worth $60,000. We'll go as high as 80% loan to value. That's because it's a first position mortgage. Uh, first position is basically like what the bank takes. They only take first position. They're first to get their money out if the, the loan goes bad. It makes it a very secure investment. So this is something we are mimicking in our investment and we're willing to give up to 8%. And this is locked in for a minimum two years to five years. For anyone that wants more information, contact Matt. He's in charge of this uh, joint venture structure. Um, his contact is on our website. Uh, we appreciate everyone that came out. Uh, please make sure you review us on meetup.com and we look forward to the next one. Thanks a lot, guys.